What happens when judgment comes for David Hallier and Mars? Well, let's hop into the pages of Legion of X issue number six, another tie into Judgment Day, and find out together, shall we? Yes, yes, I know I'm really late on this one. Yes, I know we're all probably sick of Judgment Day tie-ins at this point, but hear me out, this one is actually pretty important because it tells a very special story, one that I'm sure many people were waiting for. Mainly, what happens when the celestial progenitor, the person judging all of Earth for its crimes, ends up going to judge? Judge Legion, a character who has been shown time and time again to be just as powerful, if not more powerful, than most of the characters in the Marvel Universe who are held up as gods. This issue is also something of a tie into the events of X Men Red. If you don't remember, Droog of the Eternal set loose Uranus, the ancient ancestor of Thanos, with special access to the Eternal Armories and managed to destroy almost all of the Mars Araco mutant colony. This means that when the Celestial God comes to judge David Hallier, he's already hard at work judging himself, asking if there was more that he could have done to try and save the planet and its people. And this story essentially recounts the destruction of Mars as Legion remembers it. We also get to briefly check on in with Nightcrawler, who you'll remember was having his own trouble with the Erico High Command. After ousting one of their own council members, Arbitrix, as secretly worshipping gods and going against Araco tradition. Kirk desperately wants to try and save as many people on Erico as he can, which is difficult because they're all stubborn warrior race guys who would rather die with their boots on than actually live to see another day. Nightcrawler actually pulls off a very clever little tactical gambit wherein he seemingly challenges Iska the Unbreakable to a fight only to teleport her away. He's also sure to yield, knowing full well that if Iska didn't win that battle, she'd probably hunt him down to the ends of the earth. Now, what actually happened during the much faded battle between you? Uranus and Legion, after all, they're so incredibly powerful. Surely their battle was something to behold, especially because what we know, it took the mutants about an hour to give life to the red planet of Mars, and it only took Uranus a few minutes to destroy almost all of it. Well, here's the thing, Legion and Uranus actually start off by having themselves a psychic duel. They say when you're as powerful as these two, sometimes you don't even need to throw fists, you just need to peer into the other guy's mind long enough for all the different outcomes and possible futures to come flooding in. Which, you know, Legion has no problem with. The longer these two circle each other and puff out their chests and say, come at me, bro, it gives Nightcrawler more time to save innocent people. In fact, Legion even goes as far as to say that he siphoned some of his power to Nightcrawler during this crisis so he could teleport more people longer and further. Now, where exactly is Nightcrawler taking all of these Erico refugees? He can't take them back to Earth and he can't take them to the Eternal subspace portals. So, with no option left, he decides to take them to the Altar, which is the special splinter dimension that the Legion of X make their home in, which exists inside David Hallier's mind itself. Which ultimately puts him in a rather awkward situation when it comes to the fight with Uranus. After looking at all of the different outcomes, Uranus and Legion come to the realization that they are actually equally matched. They could fight each other, but in doing so, they would only end up killing each other. Uranus would naturally be reborn because he is an Eternal after all. But David would not be so lucky. Not only would he be dead, but he would actually be completely erased from existence, which means no altar. Which looks like it means that for everyone's safety, David is going to have to stay alive. Uranus, being the absolute prick that he is, is sure to twist the knife into Legion a little deeper, saying that he too has fathered many children over the millennia, and they're all failures just like David. Yeah, being a god with a bunch of father issues shoes is certainly not a good thing. Uranus gets the upper hand on Legion, but he is ultimately rescued in the end by Banshee. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, Mother Righteous, Banshee's new boss, and another bigger god-level character has been watching everything that's been going on with Judgment Day. And because she clearly still has cosmic machinations involving Legion, she sends her herald, Banshee, to save him, even though doing so kind of ends up showing her hand to the good guys. With no Uranus left to fight, Legion instead uses his powers to try and turn back some of the eternal war machines that are besieging the planet. He does much better than poor Nightcrawler, who attempts to try and get some of the Erico frontline soldiers to come with him, only to have the very people he's trying to save break their own arms, because like I said, they're proud warrior race guys. As David says to the progenitor, basically every time he tried to save the day, every time he tried to be a hero or a martyr, it all blew up in his face, and this time was no different 
different either. As you would know from reading X-Men Red and the main Judgment Day book, it would actually be Magneto who would heroically sacrifice himself to take down Uranus. Legion tried his hardest to help out, but Eric told him to stay behind because, well, he's an untrustworthy and chaotic god who, even when Judgment Day is happening all around them, apparently they just don't want his help. That's still not to say Legion didn't move heaven and earth to try and distinguish himself. Apparently, all those Erico mutants brought in a lot of really bad vibes to the altar and completely threw it off, meaning that Legion had to go inside his own head and work shit out. Of course, that took so long that by the time everything was said and done, the event was basically already over. So, if you were wondering why Legion just basically didn't step on in and save everybody, it this was why. The progenitor ultimately gives David a thumbs up, but Legion finds the whole thing really disconcerting as far as he cares. He's his own god. He doesn't need to believe in anything he believes in himself. That's how Magneto lived, and that's how he died too, and well, Legion finds that all very special as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Legion of Axe issue number six, everybody, and as far as tie-ins to Judgment Day goes, I would say this one is much like the rest, not really necessary to understanding or enjoying the bigger story, but definitely a fun, compelling enough character piece all on its own. Especially if you're a person who cares a lot about power scaling and constantly finds yourself saying, well, why didn't they just have X fix the problem for everyone? Well, this is why Legion just couldn't fix everything for everyone, despite his amazing abilities. Structurally, this story feels a little weird, too, almost like Cy Spurrier had a lot of material that was going to go into multiple issues, but instead it all got pushed into one tie-in. I also feel like I would probably be appreciating this story a lot more if I was reading X-Men Red. Unfortunately, I just cannot make room for it with my pull list the way it is right now. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 7 out of 10, decent and enjoyable on its own, but I'll be much more excited when we can finally return to our regularly scheduled Legion of X programming, which we will be this coming week. Hey there, everyone. Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out, too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else, too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.